Pokemon ROM hacking is easy in 2024 thanks to an awesome program called Hex Maniac Advance. I've made lots of videos and YouTube shorts covering very basic concepts of ROM hacking, but you guys really wanted me to do longer tutorials, so here we are. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom Pokemon starter selection screen by talking to an NPC. Now I'm using Pokemon Fire Red with the complete Fire Red upgrade already applied, which you can easily do by opening a clean Fire Red 1.0 ROM, going to Utilities, Miscellaneous, and applying the upgrade here. For those of you who don't know, the complete Fire Red upgrade adds Pokemon all the way up to Gen 8, including new moves, items, abilities, the fairy type, along with Megas, Z moves, and Dynamax features. Now that we have everything set up in a new ROM, I'm going to add an NPC template into our map and edit its script. What I love in this upgrade is you have all these cool overworld sprites that are from the Hoenn games. Let's use this guy right here. Now that we got our NPC here, let's go ahead on the left here and click its script address. I'm going to delete everything that was already here too. For the purpose of this tutorial, it's going to be a little more basic, but of course you can always change the dialogue to fit the story of your game. The first thing we're going to do here is create a multi-choice selection box, which will allow the player to press an option and it will perform a particular action with the script. To do this, we're going to use the prepare message command here, and then I'm going to type space, and you see auto is going to pop up there. What the auto means is that Hex Manic Advance will automatically create a pointer for where the text data will be stored, so you won't have to worry about finding free space. On the next line after this command, we're going to add a bracket, which is where the text data will be entered. I'm going to type in a simple message the NPC is going to ask the player. I'm going to create a simple message. What Pokemon would you like your starter to be? You see I have the message in between these brackets, and the text data is always highlighted in orange so you know exactly what is entered. Once we're done making that first message, I'm going to go to the next line and enter the command wait message, which will not continue the script until the whole message is played out. From here, we now have to actually create a multi-choice selection box by going to the home menu of Hex Maniac Advance. The game stores these multi-choices separate from the script, so we can find the multi-choices by going to scripts, then text, then clicking multi-choice right here. Now you're going to see all the multi-choices that Fire Red already uses. For example, here's the multi-choice selection box for the arcade in the game. To create our own, scroll to the bottom of the list and click on the last option. Now we'll press add one new, which will have three options for the starter Pokemon. For the count, we'll type in three, and I'm going to use the three elemental Unova monkeys for our starters. So I'll untip Pansage, Panpour, and Panseer. We're going to go ahead and repoint these because as you can see, these two addresses are the same. So we got to change that. I'm going to repoint all of these here as well. Now, since that we have three, I'm going to delete these bottom two that were previously there. Those should not be there. So let's type in Pansage, Panpour, and Panseer. Now just for looks, and to make your ROM hack stand out a little more, I'm going to add some color to the text to match their typing. You can add color to any text data by using square brackets and typing in the color you want. When I type green in these brackets, with Pansage following right after, it'll make its option green in the game. Let's use red for Panseer and blue for Panpour. Now that we're done with our multi-choice, up at the top here you'll see a numbered list of all the multi-choices, and you want to make sure you have this multi-choice number up here saved. In this case, we have number 65. Now that we created our multi-choice, we can hit the tab to go back to the map and double-click our NPC. You can see the word auto in the arrows here turned into an actual script address, which means the program found a free space for it. Our next step is to use the multi-choice command, which has four parameters we need to fulfill. First, it needs X and Y coordinates, which is basically where the box will be on the screen. I just like to use 3 and 3 for its position, which will place the box in the upper left corner and not interfere with the other message box that's already present. The third parameter after the X and Y numbers is the multi-choice number, which was that number I told you to save earlier, which is the ID number for that particular multi-choice. We had number 65. Now you will see we have the options to either allow the player to cancel or not cancel the multi-choice selection. For us, I'm going to forbid the player from doing that. The next command we need to enter is the close on key press command, which will not allow the script to continue until a selection is made. Since we have three options in the game, the script will read these options as 0, 1, and 2. We're now going to branch the script off into other sections based on this value, so we need to use the if compare go to command. This command will compare the variable result to a specific number to determine which section to go to. The variable will be 0, 1, or 2 based on what the player selected. So after the command, type space, then var result, then a double equal sign, and then zero, and then space, and we'll type in section one in the arrows. Now we're going to repeat this command for the other two options by comparing the var result to one and two, which will send the script to either section two or three. Now we have to create our next section by going further down and typing section one with a colon, and Hexmaniac Advance will automatically point its data. 
Since the first option is Pansage, I'm going to create a yes no message box command that asks the player if they want Pansage as their starter. It's always good to ask a second time because many players will spam the A button when talking to an NPC, so this makes sure they're okay with the selection. If the player says no, we want to send them back to the multi-choice screen, so I'll add an if no then go to command, and then we're going to input section 0, which is for the start of the script. If the player says yes, then the script will continue, and now we'll make a message box saying the player obtained the Pansage. I'm going to use the fanfare message box command, and a fanfare is the small song that plays when you obtain something. I'm going to use the obtain item music. Now in the text data, we're going to enter player in the brackets, received the Pansage. When you enter the word player in brackets, the game will automatically replace that with the player's actual name they created in the game. Now we have to use the give Pokemon command, which I'm going to type in Pansage, then what level it'll be, and I'll choose 5, then what item we want the Pokemon to have, which I'm going to use an Orenberry. If you don't want the Pokemon to have any held items, just press these question marks right here. Now we're going to ask the player if they'd like to nickname their Pokemon. Now we'll use an if yes go to command and use section 4, then an if no go to command and we'll use section 5. I'm going to throw a bunch of commands at you to get the nickname function to work. This is a little bit of a complicated process with the variables that are in the game, so just pay a little bit of a close attention. I'm going to start with the buffer Pokemon command, type buffer1 and then Pansage. Then the count Pokemon command. Then we'll use sub var, var result, 1. Then copy var, var 4, var result. Then we're going to fade screen to black. Then a special command with the change Pokemon nickname that will bring up the menu followed by a wait state command. Once this is all done, I'm going to send the player to section 4 with a go to command, and this is where I'll finish off the script. Now we're going to create section 4, which if you saw earlier, if the player says no to nicknaming their Pokemon, it'll send them straight here. We need to set a very important flag here, which will enable the Pokemon option in the start menu. We have to use the set flag command and type 0x828, which is the designated flag to enable that menu option. I'm also going to create a new flag by pressing this little flag icon, and Hexmanic Advance will create a new unused flag. This new flag we will set will make sure the player cannot trigger this script again. Now I'm going to create a simple NPC message box saying good luck on your journey. Back at the top of the script, I'm going to insert an if flag set go to command, which will send the player back down to section 4, which was the end of the script with the NPC message. We'll type in 0x0021, which is the new flag we just made, followed by section 4. Now it's time to test it in game. If you guys saw in my post editing, I made a couple errors with some of the spelling and that messed up my script. So, now that I fixed that, I can see everything is working perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and nickname the Pansage here. Then at the end, the guy says good luck on your journey. And if I try to talk to him a second time to receive a second Pokemon, you see it will not allow me to. Now in the start menu, you see we have the Pokemon menu activated and you can see my Pansage has the nickname. Now we're gonna go through the long process of repeating the Pansage script with Pansir and Panpour. One thing to note here is to make sure you have all your section numbers accounted for so your script leads where you want it to. Writing it down or using a text document can really help here. Thankfully my script here for the other two Pokemon worked on my first try, but if you're running into issues, just take it slow and go step by step. I know having a script this long can be overwhelming. If you're still running into trouble, check out my own Discord where we have a ROM hacking scripting help section. Or try the official Hexmaniac Advance Discord. Of course, if you want to learn scripting in Hexmaniac Advance at a bit more of a beginner's pace, check out Starstruck Shiny on YouTube. I've learned lots about ROM hacking from his tutorials. If you enjoyed a much longer tutorial of ROM hacking compared to my YouTube shorts, please drop a like on this video and let me know if you want more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.